Good, good stuff. Go vet. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, I'm hoping that this will be beneficial to other RTOs and basically it's a summary of our journey over the past two years using Moodle and how we've built an online learning community. Okay, Upskilled has been an RTO, private <laughs> RTO since 2010 and we have delivered training in both business and IT to over 12,000 students. We have issued in excess of 7,000 certificates, so pretty proud of that. Um, I'm here representing the business faculty and what we've done within the business faculty on Moodle. Okay, so we've been using Moodle since 2011. Uh, traditionally, we did classroom, 100% classroom training. And Moodle acted as our repository for our assessments, where students could download the assessment, upload the assessment, getting a few nods, yeah and manage our pre-course requirements with all the, the ASQA requirements, compliance requirements. And it did that very well. And it also um, helped us become a paperless office. So that was fantastic, especially from the world of all those boxes, which we're all familiar with. So from there, the market shifted about two, two and a half years ago, as we all know, and classroom training has waned considerably. And the mark, due to market demand, we've moved to 100%, nearly 100% online learning. So that's been our, our journey and our change over the past two years. So because we moved to online learning, uh, we wanted to replicate what we were doing in the classroom in Moodle. So create that virtual community classroom atmosphere. The way we started was we did our research and I attended and Upskilled sent me to a course from UNE. If anyone from UNE, giving you a free plug here guys, because this is a fantastic course. A graduate certificate in e-learning where everything that I learned in that course I then implemented into the Moodle. It was very practically based and it gave me you know the leading research and information about building online learning communities and I highly recommend it. Um, and it was all of course 100% online. I've read some information from these authors, um, Palaf and Pratt, building online learning communities. I think I googled them. <laughs> I think UNE sent me to them. And then I found this other one on Amazon, creating a sense of presence in online teaching. Both really good practical books that you, you, know, you can read in a day, but then you can take away a lot of practical tips and tricks. So part of the course required me to design the vision. What was my vision for Moodle? And of course, in my head, it was very colorful and it was like a website and it was dynamic and it was going to cater to all the different learning styles. Um, You'd go to one button and enter this fantastic room where you would do your orientation and your pre-course requirements and all those compliance requirements steps in that section. You then would go off and cater to your visual learning needs and watch videos, uh, YouTube, lynda.com we use as an online resource library and screencast. I use a lot of screencasts as well and videos that we made ourselves. Um, or you could go into the auditory section where you would read our recommended texts, our blogs, web links and any e-text that we had. Um, you'd come back out of there and then you would go into the interact and learn section where you're going to interact via discussion forums and weekly webinars and chat rooms. And I just had this vision of this wonderful website that was going to be so fantastic. And um, of course, being vet, you had to then go and show us what you'd learned in this assessment area. And thinking all of that, that was great. That was our vision. But then UNE taught me about the e-learning 2.0 principles. And I actually caught up with what Moodle already knows. <laughs> is, and that is that learning has to be not crisscrossed and it has to be linear and not vertical and the information has to be presented sequentially. So the vision had some good ideas, but it sort of changed and became more practically based using Moodle and following the e-learning 2.0 principles. And they are that the student is your focus. It has to be student focused. Um, they are a knowledge builder, you're helping them build their knowledge. You, the trainer is more of their critical friend um, and a co-learner. And I love all of these concepts as a trainer for 20 years. You know, you don't know everything, you learn it. I've learned the most by being a trainer and being an educator. So I love that concept. And I love the structure that it's not self-paced um, and that it wasn't content driven. So it wasn't just visual, next, visual, next, visual, next, do an assessment. So that was all leaning to where I, I wanted to be, but just maybe in a more structured format, but that suited these e-learning 2.0 principles anyway. 
So what we did, we created, created the courses. And what we learnt was that to build an online learning community, you have to build your trainer presence and your student presence online, their social presence online. And we all do that on Facebook already, naturally. We put our photos up, we tell people, our friends about ourselves. So we get our students to, doing that, to do that first up. I had to get the trainers to do it first and there was some reticence on their behalf because a lot of them don't like Facebook or for whatever reason, didn't want their, their picture up. So encouraged both trainers and students to build their social presence. Tell us about yourself, tell us your hobbies, tell us what are you afraid of, you know, what's scaring you the most about this journey. And surprisingly, they're not backward in telling you that in the first couple of forums. And we created a Facebook study group for each course and that, re that was that has just been so fantastic. It's been a community, a supportive community, not necessarily an education community, um, but is there somewhere where the students can go to ask questions when the trainers are not available? And they do do that, and they do come in and help each other by answering each other's questions. And what they do do, because we have managed it well, is they advocate for us. So if we get someone complaining or flaming, the students come in and protect us when we're not watching, which is a really nice place to be at this stage anyway. Um, okay, so then what else have we learnt? That we had to front load the student support. Yeah, obviously we've all talked about, you know, you've got to catch them early in the first six weeks. So we front load that, we have a great student support team and they ring the student, welcome them, come on board to upskill, welcome to our family. Um, we maintain their original enthusiasm. The trainer has to ring them and the trainer is more of a mentor and they have to ring them within seven days of them enrolling in the course. That first session is a mentoring session where a mentoring plan is conducted. And the trainers, because we use contract trainers, which I think is quite important for you to know, um, the trainers set the, the parameters up for when they're going to be available for contact. And so that's all set up. The students are really super keen as, at that beginning process. So then we get them started. We need, needed assessment due dates. We started without due dates and that was just a nightmare because people think they've got forever. So, you, you know, that made rolling enrolments a problem. So the beauty of rolling enrolments is people can start whenever they enrol, so it suits that whole sales and marketing approach, but it's a nightmare for trying to get people to progress through the course. Um, so I would recommend that you use a set start date, which is what we've moved to, away from rolling enrolments, um, and then set due dates. We then send email reminders when assessments are due from and with all our email correspondence, we personalise it, so it's not automated. So it's not a matter of just getting a system to send out an email, we personalise the correspondence so they feel like they're part of the upskilled community. Uh, we use asynchronous discussion forums, and what that discovered was that the trainers were very reluctant to write anything in the forums because it's such a new domain. And I often got, well, what am I going to say? And I said, well, what would you say in a classroom? So how would you promote discussion in a classroom? You, you ask open-ended questions. So it's no different, you know. And what would you do if a student asked you a question in a classroom? Would you just ignore them? Of course you wouldn't, okay? So if a student posts in a discussion forum, we must reply, otherwise it's dead air. So getting, and that's been a long journey to get trainers comfortable in that environment, um, which has been understandable. So a change management process has been undertaken with training, um, encouragement, support, monitoring. Um, we've made discussion forum participation compulsory, encouraging trainers to, and we need to further develop them so that they're more open-ended with their questioning to create further discussion. Um, and we trained our trainers in how to promote further online facilitation, discussion facilitation. And that's an ongoing journey. Um, we chase disengaged students early, so a student for us is disengaged if they have not logged on for 30 days. So as soon as they hit 30 days, every Monday we're running a report and we are then hit, uh, communicating with those students individually. Now we do that with our student support team, but we also do that with the trainers. We get the trainers to ring them, but I also have a full-time mentor who is chasing potentially disengaged students to find out what's going on. Why haven't you logged on? And we're here to help, you know, let's go back to your mentoring plan. What did you agree to do back on day one? You know, you, you agreed to study Tuesday nights, Friday nights, two hours each night. Have you been keeping to that plan? What's the problem? What's getting in the way? So it's very much a mentoring process. 
And we use the engagement analytics in Moodle to monitor that, which is very effective. I don't know if anyone's using that, but that's been very helpful to monitor poor engagement. We, oh wow. Well. Okay, we introduced weekly webinars and we trained our trainers up in soft skills and it was all about mentoring skills. So not only did we train our trainers in how to be effective mentors, but we've trained our student support team and we've also trained our sales staff because it is all about mentoring and trying to work out the psychology of online learners. So remember this is 100% online. Why does somebody sign up for a course and then not do anything? Like if only we knew. Why does someone sign up for Jenny Craig and not stick to the diet? Who <laughs> Like one of my trainers gave me that analogy and I thought, exactly. So basically we've got to find out what their problem is. So part of the mentoring skills was we came across this Prashashka's ch stages of change and learned how to pronounce it, which was good, <laughs> Prashashka's. Uh, um, and you know, basically this is the journey of change. So you students, before they even come to us, they're pre-contemplating with their Google search, I want to do this, that and the other thing, a cert for or a diploma. Then the sales team get them and they, they might lapse, you know, before they contemplate joining up and then they might join up and start getting prepared, but then they might lapse again and think, oh, this is not really a good idea. So you, you really need good salespeople supporting them and we call our sales team, career, well, education managers and they've been trained up in career coaching so to make sure the student is being enrolled into the right course and then not lapsing through these stages. Then we get them into the course, they're doing a course, they complete a unit and even then they can still lapse and fall away. And then we want to get them into maintenance where they're continuing on to the next unit. But the students, they might fall away after they've done one unit. So I thought I had it all sorted out, I just had to get them through the first unit. But the damn thing's a circle and it just goes around and around <laughs> and never ends. And these students never stop needing support and love and nurturing and mentoring because they go back to this pre-contemplation, do I really want to be doing this course? I don't have time, even if they've done a unit. So that's their journey. They progress and they lapse, they progress and they lapse again. So our job is to progress these students dependent on the amount of support we offer to them through these lapse periods. And these lapse periods vary for student to student, but the mentoring certainly helps. And so what's next? What comes next? Um, webinars, we're going to further build our webinars, guest speakers, industry specialists, the trainers are going to use the webinars for weekly engagements or whatever they want to do to get students talking to one another. We're going to use Moodle badges to gamify our learning, link that to LinkedIn. Um, we're going to build collaborative assessments and better online discussion forum post questions to promote online community talking and thinking and interacting and we're going to continue building our knowledge. I just recently read something about e-learning 3.0 and good God, um, web semantics and hodagogy or something I still can't pronounce. And But I think it, we're going to look at something called second life, avatars, virtual learning, that, that's interest, you know, of interest to me. I don't know if that's what it is. I've got some groans over there. Um, but that was my first response to Second Life. Oh, seriously, do we have to do this? But apparently that's where it's going to be at. So I'm going to explore that. I'm going to follow a woman who I admire greatly and who UNE introduced me to through her readings, through her blogs. Her name is Professor Gillian Salmon. If you don't know who she is, she's follow her. She's switched on. She's all about the five-stage model of e using e-tivities and trainers becoming e-moderators. So that's, we're looking into all of that as well. And we're gonna stay passionate because we love our jobs and love VET. So that's it. Cool. <laughs>